Dear students, welcome back to the logic simulation video. In this video, we are going to introduce a simple but important logic simulation technique, the compile code simulation. The idea of compile code simulation is pretty simple. We just translate the circuit into a sequence of codes. For example, the following circuit can be translated into this code. When we execute this sequence of code, we can run the logic simulation. For example, given the input ABC equal to 100, we're reading the value of ABC and uh, we execute this code where E is equal to or BC. So we can obtain the value of E equals to 0. And then we execute the next line of code so we know that H is 1 and 0. So the result is 0. Similarly, we execute the next line of code. So J is 1. Finally, K is nor HJ. So we obtain the final result, which is 0. And in this way, we can finish the logic simulation. So the key is how can we compile this circuit into a code? In our textbook, we have this flowchart. Given a circuit level description of the circuit, we first run the logic optimization to simplify our circuit. Then we levelize the logic in correct order. And then we generate the code. Eventually, we will obtain a sequence of code like this. So now, let's explain these three steps in detail. First, logic optimization simplifies our circuit before we generate the code. If we can simplify the logic, we can shorten the runtime. For example, suppose we have a three input NK with this input tied to one. We can simply remove this input. So we have a two input NK. If we have a NAND gate with one simple input, this is equivalent to an inverter. If we have a two input NOR gate with one input tied to one, which is a controlling value, then this is simply a logic zero. Or if we have a sequence of three inverters, we can simply reduce it to one inverter. If we can simplify our circuit, our simulation would be faster. Now, in the second step, we would like to perform logic levelization. Logic levelization means that we order our gate in a correct sequence such that a gate won't be evaluated until all its driving gate have been evaluated. For the same example, the left code is in correct order. If we swap the order of E and H, this won't be correct because we need to evaluate G1 first before we evaluate G2. So if we change the order, this code won't give us a correct output. So levelization is a very important step to ensure correct order of the code. So how can we do it? In our textbook, we show this algorithm to labelize the circuit. Take the same circuit for example. Initially, we assign level 0 to all the primary inputs, which are A, B, and C. And then we put all the primary input final gates to a queue. In this circuit, the final gates of primary inputs are gates G1 and G2. 
We put them in the queue, where on the left hand side is the front of the queue, and the right hand side is the back of the queue. Every time we pop out a gate from the queue. Now in this example, it's G2. G2 is not ready for levelization since we don't know the level of G1. So, so according to the algorithm, we will put G2 back to the queue. And uh, the next gate pop out from the queue is G1. G1 is now ready for levelization since both B and C have been levelized. In this algorithm, L represents the maximum of G's driving gate level, which is 0. So we assigned L plus 1 to gate G1. So now we have levelized G1 to level 1. And we append G's final gate to the Q. So we have G2 and the G3 in the queue. So the next gate we pop out from the queue is G2. Now G2 is ready for levelization since both A and the G1 has been levelized. So the level of G2 is now assigned to the maximum of A and the G1 plus 1, which is 2. And we append the fan out of G2 to the Q, which is G4. Now we pop out G2 again, but the level does not change. Please know that we append G4 again here according to the algorithm because G4 is G2's fan out gate. So why do we need this G4 again? This is an interesting question. Please see our FFT. And the next gate we pop out from the queue is G3. And the G3 is levelized to 2. And the fan out of G3 is G4. So we append G4 at the end of the queue again. Eventually G4 is levelized to 3. And then we finish the algorithm. Now it's time for you to do an exercise. Please levelize this circuit using the same algorithm. Please now pause the video and fill in this table. Given the queue G1, G2, and G3. Okay, are you finished? The correct answer is like this. G1 is level 2. G2 and G3 are level 1. G4 is level 3. Have you got it correctly? Now, in the third step, we need to generate the code. There are three kinds of target code. High-level code, such as C, can be generated. The advantage is that C code is very portable and easy to debug. However, the problem is that whenever we change the circuit, we need to redo the compilation. The second kind of code is machine code. It's very fast to run the machine code, but it's hard to debug, and it's not portable to other machines. The third code is called interpreted code such as this code. It's not the C code, it's not a machine code. This kind of interpreted code can be interpreted at runtime and executed. It's very portable and easy to debug. The runtime is a little bit slower than the machine code. 
So in summary, in this video, we have shown compile code simulation technique, which convert gate into code for evaluation. We show logic optimization to simplify the logic and the logic liberalization to sort the gate in correct order. By the way, this is also known as topological sort in the graph theory. And eventually, we generate codes. There are three types of code, high-level code, machine code, or interpreted code. The advantage of compiled code simulation is that it's very simple to implement. And the runtime can be speed up by parallelism. Please see the parallel simulation for more details. However, compiled code simulation is not perfect. Compiled code simulation provides only cycle-based accuracy. That means it does not provide any timing information. It assumes zero gate delay model. The second problem is that we need to evaluate the whole circuit even if only a small portion of the circuit has been changed. So this problem can be fixed by event-driven simulation. Please see our next video. At the end of the video, we have two interesting questions for you to think about. The first question is that, why do we need to insert G4 back to the queue again, since we already have G4? The second question is, how can we labelize SRLH, which has feedback loops? I hope you enjoy these two interesting questions. Thank you.